What's going on guys? Welcome to a new tutorial. In this Python project we are going to simulate differential drive robots in a leader follower formation. We will achieve this by translating the kinematic model of the robot to code. In fact, we will use two models, the direct model for the leader and the inverse model for the followers. As you can see here, we have five robots in the screen. The leader of the group is controlled by the user using the keyboard and the ones behind them follow its lead. And since this already have a little bit of a gaming theme, I actually designed these skins for these robots. My design skills are not impressive though, but you can upload your own designs and I use them in the next video. And before I forget, the idea of this video is suggested to me by one of the subscribers. So keep the quality suggestions coming guys, and I'll make sure to use the best ones. Before we start however, consider subscribing to the channel, it's free and you can always unsubscribe. So anyways, enough talking and let's get started. The graphics used in this simulation is provided by the Pygame library. It makes it very easy to visualize your project with just few lines of code. So you can focus on things that really matter. So we start by importing the Pygame and the math libraries. The math library contains many mathematical functions we are going to need, like the sine and cosine functions for example. The structure of the code will be as follows. The robot class, this will contain the init method for variable declaration, the move method for moving the robot according to their kinematic model, the following method for the robots that function as followers, and we have also the dist function to measure the distance between two points in the world map. And lastly, the draw method that draw the robot in the screen. And the trail method that will take care of the storing and the drawing of the trails of the robots in the map. The second class we will create is the environment class that will store the world map and we will use it to draw information in the screen and we can even draw the robot frame axis. The space beneath the classes is for declare and initialization of global variables and underneath it will be the animation loop because as you know the animation is merely an illusion created by the fast display of consecutive images this will be a job for the while loop so let us start declaring some variables in the robot class before that in each method will take some arguments namely the start position of the robot the robot image or skin as we call it, the width, and we specify also as an argument the robot which this robot will be following. The first variable is the leader boolean variable which indicates whether the robot is a leader or not. The follow variable that will store the robot to be followed and the x and y variables for positioning, theta for the orientation angle and small w for the width of the robot chassis. We also need to declare the linear and the rotational speed of the robot. The linear speed is in pixels per second, since we are working in the screen world, where pixels rule everything. So I will declare a variable called m2p to convert values from meters to pixels. The skins of the robots can be loaded easily using the pygame image load method. We need to provide the absolute path later as an argument when we initialize the class instance. The environment class will contain variables like colors provided by their RGB code, the dimension of the map which have to be written in the argument list. We set the name of the window this way. And also its width and height using the set mode method. Now it's time for initialization. We initialize Pygame and beneath it assign the start position and the window dimensions. Then we create an instance for the environment class providing the dimensions as arguments and declare a variable that will work as our on off switch. Whenever we want the application to be terminated, we set this running variable to false. We want also to keep track of the loop iterations, so we will create a variable for that. Inside the while loop another loop have to be made to iterate through the different events happening in the screen and keyboard. If the event type is quit, we set the running to false. 
This quit event happens whenever we click the red exit button in the top right corner of the window. In the outer loop, we call the display update method of Pygame. This will show the updated world map in the screen. We choose a background by calling the fill method and assign the black color for more visibility. You can choose whatever color you really like. Now it's time for a little test. We run the code and as we expected, we have a black background with the functioning exit button. Anyways, we still have a lot to do, so I suggest we head back to business. The differential drive robots have three degrees of freedom, two translational that allows it to move in the 2D world and one rotational that allow it to change its heading angle, so we need to consider this now. We declare a variable named rotated and initialize it to the original image since we start with the rotation of zero. Whenever we want to rotate the original, we first copy it to the rotated variable and apply the operation on it instead. Because rotating the original image again and again and again will cause it to get corrupted more and more. Next, we declare the rect variable. It is an object to manipulate and transform rectangular areas like our robot skin. We center it at the x and y coordinates of the robot. The method draw is simple. It just calls the bleat method with the rotated image and the rect object centered uh, at the x and y coordinates of the robot. That will paint the robot exactly where we want it and how we want it. I'll make a short test for what have been done so far. So I'll declare an instance for the robot class providing the start position and the default skin and the width of 80 pixels and set follow to none cause the robot doesn't follow anyone. Next we draw it in the animation loop and run the code. And as you see, a robot is shown in the window, a cold non-animate blue robot we have to add movement that's why you all came here in the first place all right let's do it the move method is responsible for this first we provide the argument event with a default value of none this will help us control the movement using the keyboard now let's talk a little bit about the direct kinematic model of the differential drive robot it describes its behavior, that is the change in its position and orientation after certain linear and rotational velocities were provided as inputs. Of course, it is represented in a matrix form. To use it, just perform a basic matrix multiplication and you will get equations that you can transform into code. So every robot leader or follower will be using this model to move. So let's declare the A constant as found in the model and head down to the move method. We just add the change in the x coordinates to the x values, plus, equals, and write our equation this way. The y coordinates and the orientation equations are written in the same way. We also have to multiply by a variable dt. This is delta time. We need it because we want the movement to be proportional to the time that has passed, not the frame rate. This will produce a smooth movement. You will thank me later. Declare dt and initialize it outside of the animation loop and also declare the last time variable and initialize it to how many milliseconds passed since the pie game in it was called. 
and inside the animation loop calculate dt by taking the difference between the current time and the last time and finally assign the current time to last time so it can be used in the next iteration all this does is measuring how many seconds this iteration took and divide by 1000 to get the result in seconds not in milliseconds now after we figured out the amount of rotation and translation we should do we apply it to our image we rotate the image using the rot zoom method and store it in the rotated variable the angle should be in degrees not in radians and we provide it as a negative amount because the screen coordinates origins in the upper left corner and the real world coordinates origins in the lower left corner so the y-axis is in the opposite direction and so making the angle negative will fix this problem the last argument is one so no zoom is applied the rect object as we said is responsible for translations so we apply the calculated translation to it this way so we will translate it to the actual x and y coordinates of the robot after it moved the movement of the robot is related to its linear and rotational velocities and if the robot is a leader we can change them using keyboard strokes if there is an event we check the type and if it's a key down we see what key was pushed and react proportionally keypad key 4 and 1 for the linear velocity and 6 and 3 for the rotational velocity the values are in meters per second so you have to convert them to pixels per second so that is how we control the robot in lead of the formation the other robot will just follow the leader and separate method will be dedicated for that we will take care of it later not until we define the trajectory that they are going to follow so the method trail will make sure we store the positions the leader passed through it will take the current position of the leader the map and the color of the trail now inside of a loop that iterates through a list called trail set of course we have to declare it in the init method above and as we were saying inside we will call the line method from the pygame draw class and provide the map the color and two points with indices i and i plus one this will draw the line between every two consecutive coordinates in the trail and render it visible now if you want the trail to be a specific length then add this condition if the size of the trail set exceeds a certain amount we pop the oldest element before adding the new one this make the trail set a first in first out queue now that we are done with creating the trail the following method is created as shown here the inverse kinematic model of the differential drive robot is used from the mathematical model we can see that the inputs are the difference between the current and the target coordinates and the output is the linear and rotational velocities and these as you saw are used as inputs for the direct model that will create the movement so i guess things came full circle this constant here is just a distance from the wheels to the robot center the target coordinates are of the last point on the trail this will be the basis for calculating the delta x and delta y that's going to be used in calculating the self u and self w as we see in here With that finished, we are close to do some tests. We only have few declarations and calls left to do. This is the list for the absolute paths of the skins of the robots. Each one will have one. I made five skins, so we'll simulate only five robots. Of course, 
You can create as many as you like depending on your application. To make life easier on yourself, we declare a list to hold the robot class instances for each vehicle. The leader will have to be declared first and then appended to the robots list and we will assign its leader flag as true. The followers however will be declared using this loop where each robot is positioned a 100 pixels behind the other one and we give it a skin and assign 80 pixels as the width and before we go any further an important point here is instead of each robot following the leader directly I thought it would be more suitable for our purpose if they followed each other like a train of vehicles but you can do it either way again to avoid waste of space and effort I'm going to create a method for simulating the robots it will take the specific robot and an event if there is any and then move the robot draw it and finally call the train method providing the current position of the robot the map and the color of the trail also we will remove this call we used for the test earlier and then call the simulate method in a loop for all the robots adding this condition to allow the leader to make the first move the loop have to be in these two places and we are done the debugging process is necessary because no code have immunity from human errors the first bug I found was this I it should be zero instead the move method also seemed to lack some argument namely the event argument that have a default value of none in the trail method these lines have to be outside of the loop I don't know why you guys didn't say anything and finally this fill method should be underneath the update so the screen won't be pitch black with no robots to be seen and we are officially done we run our code to see the results of our work okay the robots seem to follow the leader in a satisfyingly looking formation this is simply amazing but this is just the beginning in the next video we will fill this place with obstacles and use the path planning algorithms to plan the motion of the robots until then stay safe and don't forget to send me your skins designs in the email down below subscribe share and leave your suggestions goodbye